Ladies and gentlemen, you know, many of us have not seen Marianne Williamson um, in any of the debates. You know, you've got to raise a certain amount of money in order to be on the stage to debate. Well, she recently put out an ad on reparations in the state of South Carolina. So she is still out here campaigning personally. Excuse me. Personally, I see it counterproductive being in those debates anyway. They're not talking about any of the issues that concern black people. And that says a lot. That says a lot leading up to an election year. And they are blatantly ignoring the black community. And that's fine. You know, we're going to blatantly ignore them too when November comes. So uh, this came out. In CNN politics, ladies and gentlemen, actually, I just saw this yesterday, but it came out October 29th, and I saw it for the first time yesterday. Author Marianne Williamson, first television campaign ad of 2020, election cycle focuses on reparations and will run this week in South Carolina, an early primary state that's a crucial black voting bloc. And she's right about that because they have a big black population down there in South Carolina. But if we go um, according to the census here in America, they're going to tell you only 13% of black people live there. (laughs) Woo, they ain't going to let go of that shit. The Democratic presidential candidate, three-figure ad. The smallest ad buy of the election cycle will run in Columbia, South Carolina, starting Wednesday. It's the first presidential campaign ad on reparations and will mark a rare mention of reparations in a paid advertisement in a state with a large black voting population in the Democratic primary. The first enslaved persons were bought over and were brought over in 1619. Slavery not abolished until 1865. Shit, we're still in slavery. That's 250 years, followed by another 100 years of institutionalized violence against black people, Williams says in the ad. 350 years of institutionalized violence, she continues, that's longer than this country has been in existence. Paying reparations for slavery will not fix everything, Williamson said, but America will not have a future that we want if we are not willing to clean up the past, to clean up this original character defect of racism. Whenever Uh, Whatever it costs, it's time to do this, Williamson says. So remember, she proposed $500 billion, and we know that's that's not enough, ladies and gentlemen. But she at least is making probably the biggest effort out of all of the candidates on there. See, they all jumped up and they were for H.R. 40 because there was no money involved. Okay, that that's the only reason why they were for it. And then they want to be able to stand there on the stage. Well, I did back up H.R. 40. Nobody cares about that. H.R. 40, far as I'm concerned, is dead. And there should never have been any life to that bill in the first place. So I'm going to go ahead and play this video from CNN. Of course I have a Marianne Williamson impersonation. Girlfriend, you are so on. Right? I practice it in the mirror. During the second Democratic debate in Detroit in late July, Google tracked which of the 10 candidates on stage were being searched the most on its platform during the proceedings. In Montana, it was home state governor Steve Bullock. In the other 49 states, Marianne Williamson. Which begs the question, who the heck is Marianne Williamson? Well, the short answer to that is that Williamson is one of the 24 candidates running for the Democratic nomination for president in 2020. The longer answer to that question is, well, well, it's long, but it is also amazing. 
Williamson made her name as a self-help author and spiritual guru slash advisor. What a job title. According to Amazon, seven of her 13 books have made the New York Times bestseller list, and four went all the way to number one. Important sidebar, Marianne Williamson and I have a combined four New York Times bestsellers. <laughs> In the broadest strokes, Williamson preaches a sort of semi-secular gospel of love. Her most recent book called A Politics of Love, it was released in April 2019, quote, confronts the cancerous politics of fear and divisiveness threatening the United States today, urging all spiritually aware Americans to return to and act out of our deepest value, love. End quote. Now, throughout her decades of writing and speaking, Williamson is 67 years old, she has attracted a considerable following, particularly in the celebrity set. A 1991 Vanity Fair profile of Williamson described her this way, quote, Marianne Williamson is not only the guru of the moment in Hollywood and a growing sensation in New York, but also a leading spokeswoman for a quasi-religious phenomenon that is making waves around the country, end quote. Williamson has been a spiritual advisor to Cher. Bette Midler is a devotee. Gwyneth Paltrow, in a Goop podcast interview with Williamson last year, you really can't make this up, called Williamson a, quote, spiritual legend. Williamson officiated Elizabeth Taylor's marriage to her seventh husband, shout out to Larry Fortensky, at Michael Jackson's Neverland Ranch. Taylor and Fortensky divorced after five years. And most importantly, Williamson is an F-O-O, friend of Oprah. Williamson also had some peripheral connection to politics. In late 1994, she was one of a handful of New Age spiritual gurus invited to Camp David by Bill and Hillary Clinton as the president and first lady sought to grapple with the massive losses for Democrats, their party, in the midterm election and try to find a new way forward over the second half of his first term. According to journalist Bob Woodward, Hillary Clinton communed with the spirit of Eleanor Roosevelt following that same retreat. Two decades later, Williamson decided to enter politics in her own right, running for the open 33rd district in California, a congressional seat that includes hugely affluent communities like Santa Monica, Malibu, and Brentwood. How did that race go? Well, her celebrity devotees turned out in droves. Nicole Richie, Katy Perry, and yes, Kim Kardashian had all supported her in that race. Alanis Morissette isn't it ironic, wrote a song for her campaign. This is true. It's a fact. Look it up. The song is called Today. All told, Williamson raised about $2 million for that congressional candidacy. It didn't really matter. She came in fourth in the race with nearly 13% of the vote. Congressman Ted Lieu won and still holds that seat. So five years after that first loss, Williamson was back at it, announcing for president in January 2019. Thanks to her celebrity, in some circles, Williamson has raised more than $3 million for her candidacy from donors across the country, a total which was good enough to qualify her for the first two presidential debates, which is where the legend of Marianne Williamson, political oddball and maybe truth teller, has taken root. Watch five minutes of either of the first two presidential debates that Williamson has been in. And she stands out like a sore thumb. This thumb is fine. Don't worry about me. While the other nine candidates on stage are vying to interrupt one another at every turn and deliver their scripted talking points and one-liners, Williamson is speaking in global and beyond terms. And all of it done in her totally recognizable and also totally unplaceable accent. Take her closing statement in the first debate in Miami. So, Mr. President, if you're listening, I want you to hear me, please. You have harnessed fear for political purposes, and only love can cast that out. So I, sir, I have a feeling you know what you're doing. I'm going to harness love for political purposes. I will meet you on that field, and, sir, love will win. Or her invocations of dark psychic forces at work in the world and the emotional turbulence we are all facing. If you think any of this wonkiness is going to deal with this dark psychic force of the collectivized hatred that this president is bringing up in this country, then I'm afraid that the Democrats are going to see some very dark days. While Williamson's oddness is likely behind much of the search interest in her during these debates, she also has made several key points about the state of the country and the presidential race. So I think Williamson was exactly right when she said that you don't beat Donald Trump with a series of policy proposals alone. And her answer on reparations for the descendants of African slaves drew huge applause from the audience at the Detroit debate. 
we need to recognize that when it comes to the economic gap between blacks and whites in America, it does come from a great injustice that has never been dealt with. That great injustice has had to do with the fact that there was 250 years of slavery followed by another 100, 100 years of domestic terrorism. Now let's be clear. Marianne Williamson ain't going to be the Democratic nominee for president. Prove me wrong, Marianne. But she's already made the race a hell of a lot more interesting. And that is the point. We make new point episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. Check them all out. All right, y'all. <clears throat> so, you know, I'm not propping this woman up, trust me. But she is one of the only candidates talking about reparations. And that's really the main reason why I'm doing a video on her. And it just go to show you that the Democratic Party, the ones that are politicians and in political office right now, don't give a damn about us. They don't care about us. But they'll come around kissing your ass just for the vote. But at the end of the day, they are not on these debates talking about our issues at all. In fact, they're bypassing us altogether. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.